There's a wise old Latin principle that goes culpe pona paresto, which I just pronounced perfectly and means let the punishment fit the crime. No one understands this ancient Roman maxim better than the following video games, as proven by how they punish players who have committed the crime of cheating at them. The punishments may seem pretty harsh, but they're also very funny, which in our book makes this the perfect system of criminal justice. Yet another reason we're apparently not allowed to become crime-fighting vigilantes. But when Batman does it, it's fine. Anyway, but we're spoilers ahead for the following games. And he's not even funny! So why does Batman get to dress up like a bat and fight crime when he doesn't even tell jokes or anything like that? Who died and made him Batman? I'm sorry, what? I'm not following. Probably, I guess his parents died and made him Batman. But that doesn't mean that he's allowed to do stuff and I'm not. Well, just because he's rich. That seems unfair in this society that we have. I think it should be what is fairer is if I be Batman. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. The Stanley Parable is a game that features no combat, no health bar, no fiddly platforming, so it's not exactly a prime candidate for cheating. Instead, you can simply proceed to one of the 16 possible endings by making choices along the way. There are no wrong answers. It'd be like cheating on a multiple choice personality quiz, which is only acceptable if you end up in Hufflepuff. Being based on the source engine that powered Half-Life 2, there was still a debug console in the Stanley Parable though, and you could use the same command to activate server cheats as in Valve's game, SV Cheats 1. The results are just a little bit different though. You just tried to activate server cheats, which of course runs the risk of breaking the entire game. You've got no respect for the strict order of scripted narrative events, and I just can't have that. Yeah, you don't see Gordon Freeman getting told off by a disembodied voice when he uses the give all weapons cheat. Cheating in the Stanley Parable sees you sent to the serious room with its very serious table, where you're sentenced to stay for 100 billion trillion years to think about what you've done. I'm subjecting you to the most serious punishment I can think of. 100 billion trillion years standing here in the serious room. Perhaps after that, we can talk about the severity of your actions and whether you've learned anything. Feels like I could do all the thinking I need to do about this in just the one trillion years. Cheat again and you're teleported back to the serious room again and your sentence gets increased to a whopping infinity years, which seems a little extreme for just two little cheats. Again, the point of this story is to convey how serious I feel this cheating issue is. And I'm sure you'll agree with me once you've fulfilled your new punishment. Infinity years in the serious room. Still, plenty of time to work out which member of BTS I belong with. Ha! <laughs> J-Hope? I don't think so. I'm changing that. The most fun thing about Slender Man is how he stalks you relentlessly like a pale, skinny Terminator. Easy. Wait, did I say the most fun? I meant the most terrifying. That's the most terrifying thing about Slender Man, along with how he looks and how he sounds and his whole deal. You're familiar with his work. Ah, yes, thank you, Slendy. Always listening. And if you thought Slender Man's supernatural stalking was limited to the confines of the actual environment of the video game in which he exists, then friend, you are wronger than Slendy's featureless face. <laughs> this horrible discovery was made by cheaters playing Slender the Arrival, who tried to evade the Slender Man by glitching themselves outside the boundaries of the game. With enough jumping and grinding against the geometry that borders the level, a cheater can work their way into an off-limits area that was never intended for players to visit. At last they think to themselves, I have placed myself beyond the power of Slenderman, and therefore I have won the game. Now all that remains is to live out my days in this mostly featureless wasteland beyond the edge of the play space. Ha <laughs> ha! If only. Having detected the cheater glitching their way out of bounds, the always reasonable Slenderman takes it upon himself to punish the trespasser personally, with a serious fine and a stern warning. Only kidding, he kills them instantly. Yikes! Looks like Slenderman's punishments are as disproportionate as his arms and legs! <laughs> I'm only joking, of course, we're all friends here, Slenderman. Don't kill me. <laughs> it 
If you're not familiar with the 1994 game Heretic, imagine Doom Guy took a break from chainsawing demons and went on a LARPing weekend. It was based on the same engine as Doom, was published by Doom's publisher id Software, and featured the same fast-paced combat and coloured key collection you remember from Doom, but instead was set in a medieval fantasy world. <laughs> I mean, don't do that on your LARPing weekend, obviously. Heretic borrowed a lot from Doom, so you might reasonably expect to be able to use the same cheat codes to unlock all the weapons or activate god mode. Either that or you'd just end up typing them anyway via muscle memory. Big mistake, the cheat code for god mode in Heretic was Quicken, but if you instead typed in IDDQD, which is the god mode cheat in Doom, this happened. <laughs> It feels like I was just killed by a vengeful god, if that counts. Similarly, typing IDKFA, which in Doom would give you weapons, keys and ammo, instead strips you of all those things, leaving you ponking baddies with your rubbish wooden staff. I feel like you're punishing me because of how similar your game is to Doom, Heretic. Although in Heretic's defence, it did have some cheats that Doom didn't have. Okay, I take it back. All is forgiven. This cheat code rules. Know that you too shall kneel before me, Avatar. You too will soon acknowledge my authority. For I shall be your companion, your provider, and your master. <laughs> Back before we had the immersive 3D worlds of the Elder Scrolls games, the Ultima series ruled the fantasy role-playing roost. Look, they were good for the time, alright? Ultima 7, released in 1992, was another expansive fantasy RPG that saw you travelling to the realm of Britannia via a mystical portal that you found in the woods near your house. Jealous. The only thing I found in the woods when I was younger was the odd dead rabbit. As you'd expect from an Ultima game, Ultima 7 crafted a vast, involving world and allowed you to explore such fantasy locales as the Isle of Deeds, the Fens of the Dead, and our favourite, the Bog of Desolation. Could be a bleak marshland, could be the toilet in some student accommodation. Who can say? Ultima 7 was generally pretty tolerant of you cheating. Start the game using specific parameters and you'd have access to a cheat menu that allowed you to power up your avatar, steal items from NPCs and teleport around the map. They must really want me to cheat if they made a whole menu to facilitate cheating. Teleport to a specific set of coordinates though and you'd be called a thieving scoundrel bastard by Lord British, the in-game representation of game developer Richard Garriott. Lord British finds you guilty of the crime of cheating before sentencing you to fiery death, and even if you somehow survive, he's also wiped out all the other characters in the game. But not before he has a massive go at you for showing the results of your cheating to a friend. Or maybe even a few hundred thousand friends. If Richard Garrett asks, we're PlayStation Access. Okay, I'll tell you once more. Press the resist button repeatedly to regain your strength. In the Metal Gear Solid series, versatile mainstay character Revolver Ocelot has worn many hats. Sometimes he's your professional rival, sometimes he's your deadly nemesis, sometimes he's your dog sitter. And sometimes he's wearing a sweet beret! Hats! Occasionally, like in the original Metal Gear Solid, Revolver Ocelot is both your loathed enemy and an electrocution enthusiast. Among the Mujahideen guerrillas, I was known and feared as Shalashaska. More like Revolver talks a lot, am I right? High fives? No high fives. I'm right though. In this scenario, Revolver Ocelot intends to zap you, Solid Snake, with electricity, like a car with a flat battery. Only instead of trying to get you to start on a cold morning, he's trying to get you to divulge intel and betray your allies. 
you know, torture. To resist this torture and prevent Snake from being electriced to death, you had to hammer a single button really, really fast. Of course, you could always cheat this punishing segment and save your dainty digit the pain by using a controller with a so-called auto-fire feature and let it do the hammering for you. Or could you? No, no, you couldn't. With a fourth wall breaking meta warning, Ocelot told you not to cheat or he'd know about it. Don't even think about using auto fire, or I'll know. And if you thought he was bluffing, you thought wrong. Dead wrong. If Ocelot sensed you were using one of those turbo controllers, the game would disregard the input and let you die, resulting in a stone cold game over and Ocelot getting in trouble for getting carried away again. You did it again, Ocelot. Sorry, boss. That being said, the game's ability to detect auto-fire being deployed was less than fully accurate, meaning there was always a chance you might get away with it. Whoever said cheaters never prosper clearly failed to account for this very specific instance. If only we'd known at the time! Ow! To be honest, cheaters, I'm not sure how much more help you feel you need with the video game Titanfall. Your character can wall run, parkour and double jump with the speed and grace of an Olympic gymnast, there's a gun that will literally aim for you, and every five minutes or so you can call a giant robot suit down out of the sky. Stand by for Titanfall. Control transferring to pilot. But apparently, even after all this assistance, things were still too hard for some Titanfall players, particularly on PC, where they were using hacks to do things like shoot through walls, automatically fire if someone moved through their reticule, and auto-target enemies. There's already a gun that does that, remember? Keen to keep the online playing field level, presumably so that they could land Titans on it, developer Respawn activated their anti-cheat countermeasures a few weeks after launch. But instead of just banning cheaters, this system operated slightly differently in that it put anyone detected to be cheating into a server together, so that they all had to play against each other. It's a great idea, if only for the mental image of a bunch of bad sports toiling away in this digital dungeon as their various cheat programs automatically fight each other. What's also fun is how much obvious delight Respawn took in the whole process, as evidenced by the statement they released when the system came online. Great news! You get to keep playing Titanfall! Less great news! You only get to play with other cheaters. You can play with other banned players in something that will resemble the Wimbledon of aimbot contests. Hopefully the aimbot cheat you paid for really is the best, or these all-cheater matches could be frustrating for you. Good luck! Maybe just try playing the game properly next time, cheaters? Did you know there are giant robot suits? They really make the whole thing a lot easier. The Konami code is probably the most famous cheat of all time. Well, apart from that guy in the meme. The famous button combination, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, started off in the NES edition of Gradius, but was popularised in the NES port of notoriously tough side-scrolling shooter Contra, where it offered 30 lives and was basically essential to getting anywhere in the game. Cheaters never prosper. More like, fair players never get past the first level of Contra. The Konami code became so famous that it's now pretty much ubiquitous, appearing not just in multiple Konami games, but in loads of other titles from other publishers over the last 30 or so years. If you're playing a game, it's worth tapping it in because there's a pretty good chance something interesting will happen. Occasionally though, this power can be used for evil, taking advantage of the fact that players will enter the code almost without thinking. Enter it into the menu screen of Super Monkey Ball Jr, and it changes the title to the withering Super Nice Try. 
Blackburn. And if you enter a variation on it in the audio menu for Wave Race Blue Storm, the race announcer switches to one who relentlessly insults you. You don't have an inferiority complex. You're just inferior. It can be both. The cruelest one, though, even crueler than that, is Gradius 3, a sequel to the game that originated the Konami code, which does this when you enter the cheat. Fair players never get past the first level of Contra, but they do get to not explode in Gradius 3. Is anyone writing these down? You only have two faults, everything you do and everything you say. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of this video. There's a secret cheat code to unlock more content from Outside Xbox and Outside Extra. What you do is you click on this video here to watch show of the week from us, or the other cheat is to click on this video from Outside Extra, and that's show of the weekend. The secret cheat, so keep them to yourselves. That's it. Uh, you've discovered it. Well done. There's 100 points.